Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here. We're going to look at what's the difference between the Apostolic Church and the Southern Baptist Church. Now, let me just state this. I certainly don't have an axe to grind against the Southern Baptist Church. But with so many religions that are out there and so many denominations, people do ask, well, what's the difference? So I thought I'd do a video on what's the difference between the... Uh, Southern Baptist Church and the Apostolic Church. Now, the Southern Baptist Church is the largest Protestant body in the United States of America, about 15.9 million people. It was started over in Augusta, Georgia, was one of the places it was started at, and it is absolutely enormous. As a matter of fact, uh, there's, uh, I think, 4,400 Southern Baptist churches just in the state of Georgia alone. Other states have... Uh, more than that. So what is the difference between the Southern Baptist Church and, and other churches that are like the Southern Baptist Church and the Apostolic Church? Well, first of all, even though we would both believe in immersion, baptism, and a lot of our roots would come from the Anabaptist movement and the Baptist throughout history movement and this type of thing, there is some divergence. They would say that you believe and are saved, then you're baptized. In the apostolic church, we would say you're immersed as a part of the initiation rite. Now, we would say, obviously, that that's based on scripture, the evidence, the evidence of history, the evidence of scholarship, that Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, not he that believeth and is saved shall be baptized. We would say that the first five centuries of the church, there's no evidence of anyone ever not being totally immersed and submerged and that, as F.F. F. Bruce says, who's known as the Dean of Evangelical Scholars, he would say there's no such thing as an unbaptized or an unimmersed New Testament Christian. So we would say the overwhelming evidence is there. Now, secondly, they would repeat the command of Jesus. We would obey the command of Jesus. We would say, in the name of Jesus Christ. And they would not say in the name of Jesus Christ when they are baptized. Now, we would both believe that a prerequisite for baptism is believing and repentance. Believing and repentance. Now, sometimes they would just say believing with no repentance. That kind of varies from church to church. They'll have some latitude on that. But we would believe you, you're not eligible for baptism until you believe and then you repent. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Feel sorrow contrition for your sins. And so then you're able to get baptized. And we say in the name of Jesus Christ, and again, like Lars Hartman, many, many others, would say there's no instance in the birthday of the church on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, everyone was baptized in the name of Jesus. And this is seen in James 2, Acts 15, amongst a host of other scriptures that baptism administers the name. It's called circumcision. That's where the child got the name. And so that's where we get our family name of Jesus Christ. They would just repeat, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Maybe few of them would say the name of Jesus, but we would say it has to be. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, I'm also speaking as a former Southern Baptist as well. And again, I have no ill will. I still have relatives uh, by the droves that are Southern Baptists, many good friends, and love them all. But I am just sharing with you the differences and uh, these differences are not meant to call everybody heretics and cults and all of this, but it is to contend earnestly for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Now, for the most part, the Southern Baptist Church would be cessationist. They would say the gifts of the Spirit have ceased to be manifest in the church. We would say that God, we're still living in the same dispensation as the New Testament church, and that God still has the gifts for today. A corollary to that is, is we would believe that it is necessary to believe and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. They would say that either you get the Holy Spirit the second you believe, and there's no outward manifestation such as speaking in tongues, but rather the fruit of the Spirit, or at, at best they would say you can receive the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost as some uh, extra we would say it's essential, they would say it's extra. And so uh, you have that involved as well. So Southern Baptist churches still believe in outward holiness standards. Most do not anymore. 
uh, almost all apostolic churches would believe in outward holiness standards. We do not believe the outward holiness standards save us. We do believe that they are in con confirmation with the Word of God, and we do these things because we are saved, and that God makes us holy, but we do these things because we are holy, because of the holiness of God. Now, as far as who God is, some Southern Baptist scholars, such as Frank Stagg, many others, matter of fact, would have a very modalistic view of God. And what I mean by that is God is one who has come in modes of existence of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But it is not three separate personages, but God is a spirit. And that the Son, any differentiations you see in the New Testament would be Father, Son, it would be flesh and spirit. And that would be the differentiation line there. And uh, possibly, and, and I know this is popularized as a Gnostic term now, but it's just something I'm trying to use as communicating. I'm not a Gnostic at all, but by emanation, that the Father sends the Holy Spirit by emanation. But it is still the Father's Spirit that we receive because there's only one Spirit in God. And so when you see the face of Jesus Christ, as, as uh, W.A. Criswell said, you're seeing the Father and the Son in one person. You're seeing one throne in heaven and Jesus on the throne. And many Southern Baptist scholars are coming to that conclusion, but many traditionally have not, and officially they do not believe that. Now another fascinating thing they would believe, and a differentiating point between us, and they're very particular on this point, they would believe in unconditional eternal security. That once you're saved, you're always saved that you can't be lost. You say, well, uh, no man can take you out of the Father's hand. You can choose to leave. No, you're a man. You can't leave. Now, there's dozens of scriptures, literally, that indicate, you know, your, lest your name be blotted out, name blotted out of the book of life. Others, you know, just uh, 1 Timothy 5, 12, on and so forth, uh, that show that you can lose your salvation. I've actually done a, a video on it, Unconditional Eternal Security. But they would make that kind of an article of faith. And the reason being is at least here in America, for the most part, the Southern Baptist Church uh, has done away with the four, first four precepts of Calvinism, the tulip, but they've kept the P, the perseverance of the saints. Now, we would all believe in justification. How we get justification is a little different, but we believe in that. believe in sanctification, and uh, our definitions would be very close on sanctification. Um with an imputed and a lived sanctification. And uh, scriptures, um, we would all believe that the scriptures are the inspired word of God. They would allow maybe a little more liberal diversity in those type things. But uh, they would believe scripture. They're for the family. And overall, they're a very conservative organization. And we have a lot of the same history. But uh, there are differences, and I would consider them major differences, and I would consider them salvic differences, and that's the reason I do try to convert Southern Baptists to a more excellent way. I do try to bring them into apostolic Pentecostalism. So next time you hear or want to know, you may be just curious, what's the difference between an apostolic church and a Southern Baptist church? I hope this helps just a little bit. God bless you.